Everything's going. This hangout on air is live. We're live. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Sound Booth Theater Live for uh, what is today? The twenty eighth, Sunday, the twenty eighth. Got um three. Oh shit! Hi, I always forget to do that. Let's forget to mute that. Um. So yeah, we got three requests today. I I'm doing it on Google Hangouts on air because uh, just in case anybody else, any of the other narrators wanted to join me, I don't think they will be um, because Lori is deathly ill with uh, with I don't know I don't know some kind of food poisoning, and then um, I, not deathly. I, I like how I said that casually, just assuming you'd be like, oh, she's fine. Um, no, she's just out with food poisoning and then uh justin thomas james is uh flooded with laundry right now i think he said and um annie is probably getting ready for her gig she's actually going to be singing with jeff goldblum's um ba jazz band um out in san francisco uh that starts at seven o'clock tonight seven thirty tonight if you guys want to go check her out if you're in san francisco but uh anyway we are joined here by mr dave wilmarth um this is his Howdy. second in a row now he he likes hanging out with us <laughs> and um yeah well today we're gonna be reading uh let's see three different three different requests now i wasn't sure what the third one was going to be because it was kind of up in the air um it's probably just going to be well i was assuming i was going to need to use my my vote for dave's book because because i uh he requested kind of later in the game but then everyone you know a bunch of people voted on his stuff like immediately so i have to make some other choice um and let's see what's been on here for a while <laughs> ian requested more boxy truffle requested cringe theater but we need something for cringe theater we can't just say cringe theater unless you just want me to like cringe into the camera for five minutes um let's see we got the realms of mordred what is that transcendental appropriation um let's see a transcendental appropriation oh that's Okay, Realms of Mordred. I th I I remember seeing this one out not too long ago. It's another uh, lit RPG. Dawn of the Realms, I think, is is the name of the book, and then Realms of Mordred is the series. Forest, Gaia's Rebirth. Let's see what this is. This is another lit RPG by Caden Walker. And when did this come out? October first of last year. I don't know. I think the transcendental misappropriation sounds interesting. One of book one of the Pentacle series. Hmm. Maybe it, maybe we'll I just want to know if you can keep keep saying that after you had a couple drinks. Yeah. Oh, I forgot alcohol. I'm gonna have to make a confession, guys. Um, I don't drink all the time, and I know that's hard to hear. Um. Uh, I know that's shocking, but um, yeah, I, today I'm, I don't know, I'm not feeling the alcohol. Uh, I, I know some of you are going to reject me because of this revelation, but uh, you know, that's just the way it is. I just like to keep it real for everybody and uh, tell you exactly what my feelings are. And uh, you know, if that, if that puts me at risk at ostracization, so be it. Um but yeah, I'm not. I, I'm. I think I'll be able to handle it because I won't be drunk by the end of this uh, <clears throat> of this stream. So let's see who all is here. Ian Mitchell's here. What's up, Daniel? K Danny Katz and Phantom Kaiju. Awesome, Buddha Cat. Good to see you guys. And let's uh, let's get started. We'll get we'll get started with uh, we'll get started with the Greystone Chronicles book three. I think um, everyone's pretty anxious to hear that one. Um, it did pretty well, like right out of the gates, right? It did. It did. It's, it, I've been fortunate that the, all three books had pretty good launch days. Yeah. Um, pretty impressive. It's, it's pretty impressive how 
especially in this genre, new new authors can do so well, like right off the bat. But I think part of it is the community. I think part of it is that um, there's already so many people that are fans, that are readers, that ha that feel like inspired, and they're like, you know what, I'm gonna try and write something. And and then there's That's there's go ahead. Exactly how I got into into doing this. There, you know, some really tight knit community, some great Facebook groups, talking to the authors and and interacting with the readers, and that's that's what inspired me to write my first lit RPG, which was my first full book. Yeah, um, the Game Lit Society has been just so much fun to hang out in. Um, for the past, I mean, I've been there for what, like, I guess a year and a half now, hanging out, and um, I don't know. I I just feel like everyone's just so welcoming and so willing to help each other uh, grow as writers um and everybody supports each other you know um <clears throat> so yeah it's it's a it's a great place to be and hopefully uh hopefully we get even more great talent like new people just trying their hand at it um you know uh and especially having royal road there as sort of like a i don't know did, did dave did you start on royal road no actually i didn't i i uh I haven't I haven't even been to Royal Road yet. I, I'm, I'm I haven't ventured out there yet. Um, there a lot of great stuff is out there. A lot of terrible stuff is out there too. But that's <laughs> that, that's the way it works, right? It's all it's all free. Everyone can read anything for free. Anyone can subscribe to anyone for free. Um, but that's where a lot of really good authors got their start. Um, and where a lot of people who hang out in the Gamelit Society hang out as well just to see what's new you know what's what's it's like a crystal ball showing everybody what the future of lit rpg is or game lit i I'm, i need to get used to the change in the genre name because i'm i'm behind it right i think that game lit is actually an easier it's like easier on the it rolls off the tongue a little bit better and uh i think it's not as restrictive it's also like not the same genre right it's not as restrictive but it's a larger, more encompassing genre term yeah. that includes lit RPG. Okay, so anyway, let's get started on the Greystone Chronicles book three, Darkness Fallen. This is super spoilery for me. Um, I'm, I'm now like way more used to your characters, Dave, but at the same time, I looked through the section that you sent me and it's a lot, there's a lot more extra characters. <laughs> that I haven't met yet. So let's see. I'm going to go. Okay, wait a minute. You sent, <clears throat> I forgot you sent me the email. I'll look at that real quick. And it'll be easier. Yeah, so while you're doing that, I can, I can set the scene if you like. Yeah, yeah. So what you're about to read, uh, there are several guild members who were offered immersion pods. And for that reason, we're with their level one new tune just like alexander and his group had to do uh so the scene you're about to read is when they first logged in uh into the noob zone on their new tunes their level one tunes on the same hill where in book one brick fell down landed on a bunny and got his ass eaten by all the fuzzy bunnies all right <laughs> <clears throat> cool so i'm i'm excited to get uh get back into the fuzzy bunny game here um let's see you sent me character directions all right so helga seven foot barbarian lady dry sense of humor okay i think i'm going to use the same voice i used for um arms in morningwood okay let's see beatrix tiny gnome caster cute voice okay so uh all right I got something for that. Lugs, nine foot tall, half ogre tank, deep, gruff voice, usually quiet, intelligent. Okay, sounds easy. Benny is a human paladin, youngish in his 20s. The others are all from the original group in book one. Benny, his name makes me sound, makes me think he's a spaz. Yeah, that's fine. It's He kind of is. <laughs> he's, the, he's, the, he's the low level guy in the group and the newest. I love them instincts. 
All right, let's see. Who else is, who else is here? Bron Saber. Uh, What's up, Bron Saber? Haven't seen you before. And Truffles here finally. Jeez, we were waiting this whole time. Finally, we get to get started. Thanks, Truffle. All right. Let's go. Truffle's holding everybody up. All right. So this is... This is... Uh, Hold on, I, f- I forget the subtitle of your new one. Race on uh, book three. Darkness Fallen. Darkness Fallen. Okay. Here goes. Checking his UI, he saw that Helga and the others were logged in. He opened Guild Chat. Welcome back, noobs. How does it feel? Beatrix. No, okay, now all these italics, this is in the ch- this is in a typed in chat. They're they're talking in party chat or guild chat, okay, so it's so, just their voices. So they can still hear each other. They're not using. They're not typing. They're right. It's it's voice chat. Welcome back, noobs. How does it feel? Beatrix answered. The blue slime wasn't nearly as icky as I thought it'd be. Lugs was the next to answer. I feel a foot shorter and too weak to lift Beatrix. The ogre grumbled. Alexander laughed out loud at the image of the massive tank trying and failing to lift the little gnome. It won't take you long to level up again. This week you'll get to level 20 or so. Laney's a hard taskmaster. She'll work you till you drop. Brick's voice chimed in. Don't be messing with them bunnies near the noob hill. Lugs came back. Why? When I was a noob before, I just punted them like footballs. They squealed as they flew through the air. It was funny. Here's one. Hold on. Beatrix chided. Lugs, leave that poor bunny alone. It never did anything to... Oh, that poor little thing. Brick's laugh echoed through the chat. <laughs> you better leave. Also, I'm going to be wanting to see the video of this later. Helga warned. Uh, Lugs? I think you pa- pissed off its family. Alexander couldn't help but laugh out loud, drawing curious looks from folks around him. He took a deep breath and held it in anticipation of what was coming. Lug's voice came across, sounding a bit worried. Where the hell did all these bunnies come from? Okay, phone. This is not the time. Where the hell did all these bunnies come from? And why are they all looking at me? Beatrix spoke again. Cuz you punted their little bunny brother. Or cousin. Maybe second cousin. That really is a lot of bunnies. Laney, trying to be helpful, said, Lugs, you should run. The rest of you, do not attack the bunnies. Trust me. Lugs responded, I'm not running from no pack of fuzzy. What is that noise? Bunnies don't make that noise. They sound like angry badgers. Helga added, their eyes are red. I think they might have rabies or something. Lugs, I think Laney's right. Run! Lugs sounded irritated. Screw that noise. These little fuzzies are gonna get me to level one, maybe level two, right now. Brick's laughter could be heard drifting through the smithy this time. Then in guild chat, he said, <laughs> I tell you to watch your ass. Uh. I tell you to watch your ass, arse. Oof. Your arse. Your, your arse. I tell you to watch your arse, but I do not think them bunnies can leap that high. <laughs> but I don't, but I don't think, there it is. But I don't think them bunnies can leap that high. There we go, okay. Alexander was enjoying this way more than he should, wishing he was there to witness the fight in person. He thought the massive half-ogre, with his equally massive health pool, might just prevail over the bunny horde. Ow! Little shit's got sharp teeth! Lugs had apparently engaged a bunny. What the- Ow! Sasha's voice sounded like she was barely controlling her laughter. (laughs) Somebody tell us what's going on! Helga's tone was full of dry humor. Our big strong tank is trying to punt a whole goddamned army of bunnies. There must be 40 of them. They just keep leaping at him and... Oh, shit! That had to hurt. 
One of them just latched onto his junk. Apparently, they can leap that high. Alexander looked to find both Brick and Grumpy rolling on the floor, holding their stomachs. He imagined Max was probably in the same condition somewhere. Beatrix's tiny voice sounded horrified. Oh my god, this is horrible! They're... Funny, but fuzzy bunnies shouldn't act like this! They're eating lugs! Lugs was now in a panic. Get these goddamn things off me! Ow! <laughs> <laughs> ah! You I little like, shit! I like the motions. <laughs> say, say it again. I like your arm motions when you were reading that. <laughs> ah! You little shit! It's trying to chew my nuts off! Laney, still trying to be helpful, shouted, Stop! Drop! Uh, stop, drop, and roll! Alexander was now laughing so hard that if Brick and Grumpy weren't doing the same, people might have questioned his sanity. Helga's play by play resumed. She was clearly laughing as well. <laughs> He's got like two dozen bunnies on him now. <laughs> he managed to kill a few, but the others are hanging in. Literally. Hanging off of his arms, legs, junk. Looks like he's wearing a bunny loincloth. Lugs, stop running in circles. Do like Laney said. Lugs' normally deep ogre voice was now improbably high-pitched as he went into full-on panic mode. Fucking bunnies everywhere. Get off me. Ow. Helga could barely speak. Oh my god. <laughs> he just ripped the junk bunny off and... Well, Lugs won't be having any baby ogres any time soon. Hey, Lugs! You know that won't grow. You know that won't grow back, right? You gotta die, bro. Benny broke in with, "I gotta heal him. He's down to fifty percent already." Nearly everyone in the guild chat shouted at the same time, "No!" Except Sasha, whose snort laughing could be heard loud and clear. Brick, gasping for breath, said, <laughs> "I warned you." Don't be messing with them bunnies, I said. Lugs did not seem to be in the mood. God damn it! You knew this would- Ow! Ah! Help! Helga helpfully <laughs> added. He just tripped and fell! <laughs> Squashed a bunch of them. But now they've got access to his face. The whole herd has jumped on. I can't even see his head. Oh man, let this be over soon. I'm gonna have nightmares. Beatrix just puked. Roll, Lugs, roll! There was silence in guild chat for several moments. The guild tab on his UI and watched Lugs' health bar drop bit by bit. When it hit zero and Lugs died, Helga said, That's it, he's gone. Jesus, that was like a damned boss fight. The fuzzy bunny boss. Laney said, Nobody move. After they killed Lugs, they all just left. I don't like the way they're looking at us. Alexander held his breath. Excuse me. This was like the old radio dramas from the earliest, from the early 20th century. Yeah. He could picture his friends standing very still on the noob hill, watching the red-eyed bunny herd nervously. Benny quietly said, Some of them are hopping away with bits of lugs in their mouths, like trophies. That's just wrong. Excuse me. Helga frantically added, Quick! Find the one that bit off his willy! I need to get a photo of that! The sound of Benny puking was the only answer she got. Laney said, The bunnies have gone. I'm going to skin them while we wait for Lugs. You guys loot the corpses when I'm done. It didn't take long for Lugs to return. In the noob zones, if you were under level 10, there was no 10-minute wait for respawn. Lugs' voice was soon back on air. God damn it, Brick! You set me up! Those fucking psycho, rabid, dick-munching asshole bunnies! What the fuck? <laughs> Hold on, I, I can't remember where you where you ended the... I've been reading from the... Right, right after Chalupa. I like two okay. lines. Brick was back on the floor, barely able to breathe. His laughter echoed through the chat. Alexander helpfully translated, Brick is unavailable right now, as he's currently peeing himself a little. But if he could speak, he would point out that he tried to warn you. Lug sounded angry, but resigned. Mm, yeah, well, screw those bunnies. 
Helga chimed in. I wouldn't try that if I were you. You just got your chalupa back. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> All right, cool. Okay, so that was an awesome scene. Thank you, Dave, for requesting more from uh, from the Greystone Chronicles series. Thank you for reading it so well. That, that was awesome with the uh, hand motions and the... <laughs> me, me and my me and my little fuzzy bunny here have been cracking up. Oh, you have a bunny with you? This was a Christmas gift from my sister, oh. and this is specifically because of the bunny scene. Can you see it? Yeah. You need to like. It's ferocious. Bang. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so guys, that is available right now. When when did you release it? Friday night. Last night. Last night. So. Um, oh, oh no! Yeah, no, you're right. Friday night. I'm sorry. Night? Yeah. So it's available yeah. now. Go buy it up if you haven't. Uh, if if you haven't yet, and you've already read books one and two, but if you haven't read books one and two, go buy those and go buy those instead. And the audio version for book one should be ready soon. Like, uh, let's see, I'm going to be sending you, Dave, more to listen to tonight. Um, Great. And then we should be done. I should be done recording all my bits. By the way, I totally underestimated how much dialogue I would have to do for this book. It's huge. Like, this is almost as much as reading an entire book for me. So, uh, let's see. I'm about, I'm just a little over halfway done recording, but um, it will be done. Record. I'll be done recording by Tuesday. Sin's going to be proofing for the week. And uh, yeah, we'll be sending off here pretty soon. So, all right. So, next, our next request is. What, what was it again? I forget. I the Veil Walker. Uh... Let's see. Isaac Winter's Soul Reckoning. All right. Now, I've seen Isaac Winter's name around a lot in the group. Um, has he already released? Uh... Oh, Lost Archive. Yes. Okay. Yeah, this is the second book. Lost Archive was oh, a really good book, by the way. I see. Okay. Yes, I remember seeing this one around a while back. Okay, so Soul Reckoning is book two. And, okay, this, these are his next books. Oh, and it looks like he's already planned book three. Oh, no, this is a Bail Walker's short story. It's got a cool cover, cool steampunk girl cover to it. Um, but, yeah, let's see. So let's take a look at this doc he sent me. All right. So did I ever read from Lost Archive? In, in I don't remember seeing you do it, but it's. I wonder if he's in the in the chat with everybody else. Bronze Isaac, are you there? Isaac, are you in the? Are you hanging out watching? Danny, are you saying you don't think so to me? Uh, to me, reading it before, I could have sworn that that I read read book one before, but maybe not. <clears throat> I don't, maybe not. Maybe not. Okay, so let's. Uh, I'm going to read the synopsis for the first one. Winston Beckett is a linguistic scholar poring over musty manuscripts and ancient translations, that is, before he finds a book of ancient runes, before people start disappearing. When he deciphers the strange book, Winston discovers a secret so big it throws him into a different world. Literally. No more grading papers, no more research, no more work, just him and the veil, the eerily realistic game world he falls into. Des desperate to find his missing colleagues, Winston must navigate this strange new world, using only his wits to survive. Quests, skills, and loot await him, if he's up to the task. Along the way, he'll need to fight enemies, recruit allies, and go on a journey of magic and adventure. And at the end? Well, let's just say he won't be the same person he started as. Alright, so that's an interesting idea, like a linguist. A linguistic scholar. That's... Very meta for an author to write about. He, he did a good job. His, wonder, the book one was really enjoyable. Well, 
that's very good praise. So if you guys haven't checked it out yet, look up Lost Archive on Amazon. It is available as well as book two. I think book two came out January 8th, so it's nice and fresh. All right, so as for the scene he requested, let's look at his notes. Characters in this scene. Lori, POV character. Practical, no nonsense. Already knows a little about the world from her friend Winston, the MC of book one. Oh, okay. So we've switched perspectives. Let's read. Oh, it looks pretty much the same. That's weird. Okay. Guardian. Think Galadriel from Lord of the Rings. Smooth, ethereal. Galadriel, is that a... Uh... What's her name? The... Um... Lady Elf. Yeah, but there were a couple, right? There's Liv Tyler's one. No, this was... Uh... Uh, I can't think of her name now. The older lady. Oh, the one the one that was in the one that was like ridiculous hot in uh the newest Thor movie. Damn. No. I don't think so. I haven't seen the newest Thor movie, but I don't oh. remember her being. Um <clears throat> Hold on. Okay, you know, that's, that's her. Kate Blanchett. That's right. That's it, yeah. Yeah, uh, Kate Blanchett, okay. Goblins, scratchy, high-pitched sounding. I know how to do goblins, all right? Dark Sorcerer, at the end of the chapter, bold, commanding, deeper voice than the others. Okay. System messages slash stats. Static AI voice, whatever works for the messages, stats. Okay, so he, he wants an AI voice. <clears throat> cool. All right, well... I guess uh, I have to be Lori. Lori, this was this was your literally your role. <laughs> it's it's a it's a chick named Lori with red hair. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll just do it. You know that sensation you have when you're falling asleep, then suddenly awake with a jolt. Yeah, like that. Only times one hundred. My stomach whooshed into my throat, and I felt the rush of cool air all around me. I was falling, 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 and this monster still had its claws deep into my flesh. This was how I was going to die. At least it was interesting. Just when I thought it was over, a patch of warm grass rose up to meet me. For whatever reason, the creature let me go and flew off into the distance, still shrieking as it went. I laid there for God knows how long just feeling the warmth of the grass beneath me and the sun on my skin. I was alive. I didn't know where I was, and every fiber of my being hurt like hell. But I was alive. And that would have to be enough for now. Sleep tugged at my eyelids when I saw a strange message flashing before me. Welcome, new traveler. Your guardian will spawn shortly. I blinked and squinted. What? The message didn't go away. I swiped at the air with my hands and caught nothing but air. What was going on? I rubbed my eyes and pushed myself upright. Wherever I was, it was about as different from the academy as I could have imagined. Green, rolling hills replaced the brick-laden lecture halls and the tall spires of buildings. The sun shone down. That word always messes me up because... And with the British accent, you say Sean. And I don't know. I don't know. It, just, it just always messes me up when I'm doing an American accent. <laughs> the sun shone down brightly from above. A little too brightly, if you ask me. I was used to working in relative seclusion in my office or the library, not under this harsh light of day. I brought up a hand to shield my eyes. That's when I saw yet another hallucination. A tall, white-clad woman stood before me, extending a hand. <clears throat> you had quite a close call there, traveler. Great. Now she was talking to me. Excuse me, miss? I asked, blinking at her. This wasn't real. This wasn't real. I had to be dreaming. Welcome, traveler, she repeated. 
Welcome to the Vale. I froze at those words as the air rushed out of me. A weight settled on my chest and, w chest and wouldn't leave. The Veil. Oh no. It was all true. Do you know Winston Beckett? He came here too, right? She flickered like a bad TV station and made a small buzzing sound. <sniffs> no more information on that topic is available. I narrowed my eyes at her. What are you talking about? Where am I? You are in the Vale. You appear hurt, though. May I help? Well, I did hurt, but I didn't want to just trust this random ghost lady. I swallowed. So, I really was in the Vale. How do I know you won't hurt me? I asked warily. <clears throat> I am your guardian, she said, still extending her hand. I am bound to serve you and help you through your first steps in the Vale. I sighed and relented. Might as well. <sighs> Fine. Fix me up, Doc. She reached out and put a hand on my shoulder. I nearly flinched away. She was so cold. A cool, soothing sensation flowed throughout my body, like a drink of cold water on a hot day. Out of the corner of my eye, a number rose. HP restored. Let me see if there's anyone else in the chat. Yeah, nope, nothing new. There you go, small one, the Guardian said and smiled. Let's cut to the chase, I said, standing. I was still new to this world, but I had what Winston had told me about it. <clears throat> but I had what Winston had told me about it, at least. You're going to make me create a character or something, right? Why, yes, she said. How perceptive of you. An array of options appeared before my eyes. Enter your name. I thought about it for a moment. Winston had told me that he'd chosen a different name when he appeared in the Vale. Perhaps he wanted it to be a fresh start. A blank slate to reinvent himself upon. I considered using a different name, but Winston wouldn't know if it was me if he was came wouldn't know it was me if he came searching. But then again, I didn't know if he could get back in here. I didn't know how I'd got in here. Memories flashed through <clears throat> Memories flashed through my mind's eye. The library. A flash of light. A portal. A monster. Winston. I shivered. Good thing the Guardian had healed me after all. My stomach sunk as I wondered where the monster had gone off to. Did it have a master? Was it spying on us? I shook those thoughts away. Lori. I nodded. My name will be Lori. She stopped, stuttering like a record skipping over and over. Oh, no, wait. Welcome, traveler Lori. Welcome to the Vale. Create y y your, your, your... She stopped, stuttering like a record skipping over and over. At that moment, the ground shook and I fell to my knees. I tried to keep my balance, but a loud buzzing assaulted my ears. The same buzzing I'd heard earlier. Veil, un veil energy unstable. Veil energy unstable. Veil energy unstable. It lasted only a few seconds, but it felt like much longer. As quickly as it had started, the shaking stopped. The flickering stopped. All was quiet again. All was normal. Or at least, as normal as it could have been. I looked at my guardian and stood on shaky legs. What the hell was that? She furrowed her brow and tilted her head, confused. What was what? Let's just get this over with, I grumbled. Create my character. Error. Your character has already been created. Randomized choices have been selected for you. What? I screamed. That's so unfair! I want to do over. Have a nice day and enjoy the veil. Be safe out there. With that, she disappeared. This is bullshit! I yelled to no one in particular, kicking a nearby rock. Still grumbling, I pulled up my character sheet to see what that little glitch had cost me. Name, Lori. Race, Gnome. Racial bonuses, plus 10% base constitution slash charisma. Luck of the draw. 
plus 20% base luck. Class, unknown. Choose at level 5. Level, 1. Health, 100. Mana, 100. Stamina, 100. Strength, 10. Agility, 10. Constitution, 11. Intelligence, 10. Wisdom, 10. Charisma, 11. Luck, 12. You've got to be kidding me! A gnome? I looked down at my feet, which were a lot closer to the ground than I was used to. Her feet were closer to the ground? <laughs> yeah. I wasn't wearing shoes and stubby little toes stuck out through the grass. At least it was warm. My vision felt a little different, too. Colors seemed brighter, and I could see the faintest halo of light coming off the horizon. I squinted, trying to make sense of it. I looked around, turning in place. The rest of the world looked as if it had... if it... The rest of the world looked as it had when I first arrived here, but the halo of light remained. Whatever it was, I decided, I was going to find out. I set a course and started walking. I saw a small map in my HUD, but it wasn't much help because I'd only just arrived. Everything was covered with what they called the Fog of War. I assumed that once I explored more places, the map would open itself to me. But for now, I had to make do. Mm. I need a lot of liquid when I'm narrating as a female. It's stressful on the voice. Ahem, <clears throat> ahem. Uh, where did I go? Where did I leave off? I hadn't been walking for long when I heard something behind me. Footsteps. I resolved not to turn around and look, but kept walking. Foolish. In this kind of open terrain, anyone could see me. Anyone could follow me. I was new, unarmed, and, tonal and totally vulnerable. Stupid, stupid, stupid. The footsteps came closer, and I tried to pick up the pace, but my newly shortened legs were no match for my pursuers. A snarl ripped through the air, and before I could get away, they'd surrounded me. Three creatures clothed in only rotting rags encircled me. Saliva dripped from their, hag from their hanging maws, and they held crude weapons such as clubs and maces. There were quite a few rusty nails sticking out of one of the weapons, and I shuddered to think how that would feel going through my skull. There was one thing Winston never told me about in this world. How did death work? I gulped. Looked like I was about to find out. I raised my hands above my head, watching them for their next move. I'm unarmed, I said, my voice shaking. Look what we got here, boys. The first goblin spoke, a mixture of snarling, wet sounds. Somehow, I could still make out their words. A noob. My heart beat faster in my chest. Wasn't this supposed to be some kind of safe starting zone? Unless this was part of the glitch, too. My mind flashed back to the random earthquake I'd endured just moments ago. Veil energy unstable. But what did that mean? Whatever it was, it didn't sound good. And whatever it was, I had a sinking feeling that things were about to get weird. Pretty soon, these goblins would be the least of my worries. I always wanted to try gnome, one of the goblins said, stepping closer. The nails on his mace glistened with something that looked scarily like blood. I didn't doubt that. Who knew how many people they'd killed already? Heard their... Uh. Heard their chewy, the other goblin said. Well, I'm going to find out, said the third one, lunging forward. I ducked, suddenly grateful for my short stature. His mace missed, but only barely. It threw him off balance and he staggered. I used that as my cue to run. It was a foolish hope. But what else could I do? I tripped and one of the goblins threw itself on top of me, his scaly face now inches from mine. I wriggled beneath them, trying to get free. Get off me! I aimed a, quick, I aimed a kick square at his kneecaps. He screeched but raised his club, ready to do me in. I closed my eyes, waiting for the end. With a screech and a thump, 
the beast fell on top of me. Dead. A magical bolt protruded from the creature's forehead, only inches from piercing my skull. I pushed him off me with great effort and rolled over, looking for my unknown savior. The other goblins had been dispatched in the same fashion. Magical bolt to the head. Whoever was out there was a magic user. And a pretty good one at that. The goblins twitched on the ground in their death throes. I spun around, brushing myself off. But didn't see anyone. That's when the cold steel of a knife pressed itself against my neck. All right. And who is this? Oh, this is... Oh, that's the end. I think. Yeah, that's the end. Uh, I got one more voice to do. Oh, okay. She'll do. I heard a voice say. And a rough burlap sack wrapped around my head. All right, and that's it. <sighs> oh man, I am so glad I don't ever have to narrate like an entire book as a female ever again. Yeah, it's got to be rough on your voice. Mm -hmm. But uh, better you than me. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of fun to be honest because it's just like a challenge, you know, but at the same time, it's painful. Just, I mean, like I can do it for, for a while, especially if it's just characters. And uh, that voice is actually um, the voice of, uh, what's her name? I'm so bad with names and characters. Um, Abby from Hell's Rejects, the Chaos of the Covenant series. Uh, nice. I really, I really developed her voice <clears throat> a lot for in that series. And now she's like one of my favorite characters to voice. But again, like that one, that series is third person. So it's it's not nearly as bad on my voice. In fact, it's kind of fun. It's kind of cool when there's like a strong female male, male character, female male character, main character, um, to always go back to, because it's like it's like a, it's, I don't know, just switching back and forth between my normal voice and you know, y using her voice is just there's something soothing about it. I don't know. It's like it's like stretching. I don't know. I don't know how to explain this stuff, guys. Leave me alone. You should keep some uh, some tea with honey and lemon or something close by to keep your throat from deteriorating. I, I do have tea here. There you go. Um, okay, so our last our last one is going to be transcendent. Trans. Oh, by the way, thank you, Isaac Winner, for requesting your book. I hope you guys enjoyed that and it made you curious enough to go check it out on Amazon. That was book two of the series. The first book is called Lost, Lost Archive. Archive. Lost Archive. So before you pick up book two, check out book one first. And um, yeah, that was fun. Okay, so Transcendental Misappropriation. Let me, let me go ahead. Sin is here. Hi, Sin. Uh, say, say, uh, say it again. Sin is here. She she's in chat. I didn't notice, but she's in a little ways up. Hey Sin, what's up? Okay. Um all right, and I think yes. Robert Harper is the author. I believe. Hold on. Yes. Uh and he sent a PDF. So I'll get on that. All right. So he also left a synopsis. Danny, a 27-year-old small-town chemist, dies a tragic and embarrassing death. He is, of course, reincarnated with all his memories in another world. Growing up, Danny discovers he not only has magic, but is gifted in it. Through a series of events I won't get into, he is placed with a team of three girls, Ivy, Brooke, and Jade. And after five years training together, the four teen teenagers head out on their first mission. All right, voice slash character descriptions. Ivy, confident and in charge, third daughter of politically influential family and leader of the team. Brooke, fun-loving and outgoing, third daughter of politically influential family and tank of the team. Jade, shy and reserved, third daughter of politically influential family and archer of the team. So three third daughters of three different influential families or He's got sort of a 
it's sort of an Asian, uh, you don't need any daughters after the first daughter kind of feel. Yeah. Okay. And then Danny, absent-minded MC and sorcerer of the game. <clears throat> All right. So wait, so you got leader, tank, archer, and sorcerer. So what's the leader do? What's their class? That's not, there's not, that's not a class leader. He's cheating. Okay. All right. I'm going to narrate with a British accent just for fun. And I'm not going to make the characters British. Again, just for fun. <laughs> All right. So here goes. Their journey continued for a few uneventful days when they were set upon by a pack of beast wolves. Danny had been looking around the dense forest for plants resembling those from his alchemy books. If they had time on the trip, he was going to practice his alchemy skill some more. Too much of his free time back at the headquarters was spent sleeping or trying to catch up with the girls. Unfortunately, that wasn't going to happen any time soon. He was pleased that his magics were an equal contribution to any one of their martial skills. Over the years, his magic had grown, but only at a slightly faster rate than before. He really wished he really wished he could measure his magic in some easy-to-discern fashion. He had stopped as he spotted a new mushroom with black and blue spots. He quickly went over and started digging in the soil. He had to get the roots, and this one apparently had something similar to a taproot going deep into the ground. Ivy called back to him. Danny, please keep up. What are you doing back there? I just uh, found a mushroom that I haven't seen before. Don't you dare eat that. It could be poisonous. I'm trying to level my alchemy skill. I'm not going to eat it. Picking mushrooms is foraging, not alchemy. I I know that. Jade barked a warning from above. Uh, and then Jade is who again? Uh, Truffle's got a good question relative to the voices. He wants to know which daughter is going to be Foxy Love. Oh, I could be Jade. Let's see. China. <laughs> oh, no, we'll, we'll do Brooke, Brooke because she's fun loving and outgoing. All right. Jade is shy and reserved. I'll I'll go with um, I'm gonna use um Andrea's voice from Super Sales for her. Jade bonked warning from above. Wolves! Danny to your left! Annoyed being annoyed being annoyed having been interrupted, Danny absently waved his hand to his left, creating a half circle wall of flames before going back to work on the mushroom. Brooke yelled, Wolves! It was Ivy's turn to yell. Uh, and Ivy's the, yeah, Ivy's the leader. Danny, wolves! Danny had dug about six inches in the ground, and the roots still hadn't ended. Ivy, it's just wolves! Nothing you three can't handle! I almost have... Danny suddenly remembered he was a sorcerer, and started laugh laughing. Loosening the soil with earth magic, he quickly pulled up the rest of the mushroom. Standing up, he turned around to show everyone his find and stopped laughing. Ivy was bent over with her hands on her legs, struggling to catch her breath. Around her were the corpses of four large beast wolves. Each wolf had been significantly larger than her. One had been pierced through the eyes with a crossbow bolt. The other three had been run through at critical locations with her sword. Brooke had taken a knee and rested her large shield on the ground. She had killed six wolves, most of them had obviously flown a few meters, wrapped around trees or laying unmoving on the ground. This was made more impressive the fact that she had done it. This was made more impressive by the fact that she had done it with a one-handed mace. Danny looked to his right and starved his flame with all Danny looked to his right and starved his flame wall with air magic. On the other side, Jade was pulling arrows out of the five wolves she had shot. From what he could tell, each one seemed to eat, each one seemed to only need one of her arrows to die. Danny's shock-addled mind could only come up with his golden with this golden gem as a proof. Danny's shock-ad. Okay, get back in the groove, dude. 
Danny's shock-addled mind could only come up with this golden gem as proof of his high intelligence. Oh! The sound of heavy breathing got louder, louder, and quickly, Danny turned his head to see an irate ivy, standing with her face inches from his own. What? The question came. Oh, that's her. What? The question came out of her at a deceptively quiet volume. Danny looked around timidly. What? What? Ivy some. Ivy somehow had the mushroom in her hand before Danny could stop her, and turned to him with a smile. Danny did not find this reassuring. What is so important about this? What is so important about this mushroom that you almost got us killed? Can it maybe bring one of us back from the dead? Danny's fight or flight response was heavily leaning towards flight. As he took a tentative step backward, he mumbled, Arthritis? A look of confusion washed over Ivy's face. What about arthritis? Danny took another step and jumped as his back hit the tree. Oh, Danny took a s- Danny took another step and jumped at- Wow, I just- I just choked myself with saliva. <coughs> uh. Danny took another step and jumped- as his back hit the tree, the mushroom. Okay. Danny took another step and jumped as his back hit the tree the mushroom had been growing under. It can be used to treat arthritis. If someone had been observing from above the tree line of that particular part of the forest that day, they would have seen countless birds in a seemingly half-kilometer radius take flight, obviously started by a loud, high-pitched scream. Danny's face was scrunched up and bits of mushroom were peppered all over it. Danny turned his head to the side before spitting out more pieces of the mushroom. <laughs> Ivy, I am sorry. I got distracted again. Ivy threw her hands in the air. You got distracted again. Danny, do I need to remind you of your propensity for getting distracted? N no. Ivy narrowed her eyes at him. Yes. Yes, I do. I won't go over all of them, but let's get the highlights. Brooke. Stop that and help me here. Brooke had fallen on her back and hadn't stopped laughing until Ivy singled her out. Clearing her throat, Brooke asked, <clears throat> What about that? That big leg? Ivy rolled her eyes. Yes, the big leg you say you saw. Danny, sh Danny sheepishly interrupted. It's Bigfoot. It's called a Bigfoot. Ivy just shot daggers at him. Daggers. Ivy just shot daggers at him. And what did it turn out to be? Embarrassed, Danny stayed quiet. Brooke started laughing again. <laughs> An element's damn big forest troll. I didn't think we were going to be able to kill that one. Fast bugger. Fast bugger. Mm. Fast bugger. That's hard to say in an American accent. Fast bugger. No one says bugger. And here in America. Foxy does. Here in America. Fox, Foxy does. An <clears throat> element's damn big forest troll. I didn't think we were going to be able to kill that one. Fast bugger. Danny nervously smiled, hoping Brooke's laughter could change the mood. Yeah, if you hadn't crippled... Yeah, if you hadn't crippled both its legs long enough for me to burn out its heart, I don't know how we would have gotten it. It kept wiping its head around too quickly for me to hit its brain. Wiping its head around, okay. Ivy wasn't smiling. Then you found that special plant in the forest. I thought it was a plant with mana! It was a male nature variant beast snake, and it was mating season! How many snakes was that? Brooke was grinning at Danny's obvious discomfort. I counted at least 27. Danny crossed his arms and looked away. Seeing his mood, Ivy changed tactics and spoke pleadingly to him. Danny, we could have avoided all of those fights. I know. Danny quickly agreed as they started getting ready to leave. All right.
So that's was uh, Transcendental Misappropriation, book one of the Pentacle series. So thank you, Robert Harper, for requesting that, if it was indeed you who requested it. And if not, thank you. Or either way, if so, if not, thank you for allowing us to uh, feature it on Sound Booth Theater Live. So that's our last request. Um, let's see, do we have any other message retracted? Danny, what did you say? You said bad words, I saw it. Oh, uh, no. You said bad words? I don't think you did, but I'm going to claim it. <laughs> uh okay so yeah and that was that that's it guys so um that was uh that was the show wow we didn't even go an entire hour the requests yes. were very short today um yes. but that's okay um that, that <laughs> truffle sense. wants you to sing diggy diggy <laughs> diggy diggy what is that it's i don't even know dwarf song is. Is is that? Did you write it? No, 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 no. <laughs> it's from. Uh, it's from. Ah, uh, oh, crap. Yeah, hold on a second. I'm pulling it up. Foxy love. I I have yet to actually use that voice in an audiobook. Come on, y'all. Here's Diggy Diggy. The hell is that? Oh, okay. Oh, the words are coming. Maybe not. What is it from again? Yeah, anyway, you get the idea. What what is that from again? It's from uh oh, come on guys, help me out. Don't leave him hanging. Diggy guys. Holds, it's... it's what's the name of the game? You guys are uh, total all blank. fired. You guys are all fired. Total blank. Know? It's it's not new. It's been around for a while. I can't think of the. Oh uh, well. The Yogs cast. Anyway, tr truffle was. Uh, Minecraft. Oh, there you go. Song. I couldn't think of the name. Really. Oh. It's 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 not from. The game. Tribute. Ah okay. Song. I see. <clears throat> maybe someday. Yeah. Maybe some maybe someone should request that. I don't know. <laughs> um, but uh yeah so that that was the show for tonight but to let's see next sunday dave me hugo and charles and charles's wife right yeah we're gonna be playing a drinking game for sound booth theater live it's going to be uh cards against humanity and actually there's like a browser version of the game so we'll be playing it through that did i did i did i say it was a drinking game Yes, we're doing it. We're it doing definitely, it with alcohol. So um, definitely it's be a lot of fun. content. It's it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. But by that time, I'm sure War Eternus will be out. So uh, out of your three guys' uh, books, uh, uh, Dave's will not be out yet. But um, we will be talking about it. We'll be talking about. Um, I don't know. We'll probably be talking about the books, but we'll also just be dicking around and playing Cards Against Humanity. So uh, if you guys want to hang out with us while we do that, that's next Sunday at 5 p.m. Should it be later since we're going to be drinking and maybe we want to pass out after? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we can we'll, adjust we'll, the time. I'm up for that. <clears throat> well, uh, maybe, I don't know. I, I don't want to dis dis disinclude, exclude. I don't want to exclude people who don't stay up that late, but at the same time. I don't know what. What uh, what time frame is Hugo in? Oh, uh, time zone. I don't know. I think is he, he in lives Brazil? in Brazil. I think he lives in Mexico City. Okay. So let me see. It won't be later for him. It'll be earlier. It's Central. 
it's the same time as here. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, uh, we'll tentatively schedule it for five o'clock, but maybe seven. It, I, I don't know. How long do you think a, a game of Cards Against Humanity online with five to maybe more people? Oh, we should get Lori on. We should get Lori on. See if she wants to play. Yes. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll see what other narrators want to join. And, um, yeah, that'll, that'll be the Sound Booth Theater. It'll be the first Sound Booth Theater live game that we've ever done. So, I'm sure we won't finish the game. We'll probably just go until somebody can't speak anymore. Yeah, which shouldn't take too long, depending on what we drink. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, uh, thank you guys for coming and hanging out. Thank you, Dave, for hanging out with us as well. And being yeah, my pleasure. I just want to say say thanks to all the folks that are in chat and who are watching. And uh, especially Taj, I appreciate you showing up. I know Taj is writing a book of his own. He's in editing right now. And, oh, nice. And uh, has been scrambling to get it done. So thank you, Taj, for taking the time. And uh, Everybody else for watching us with this ridiculousness. It was indeed ridiculous. Thank you guys. And I'll see you next week at the latest. Might have something else this week coming up. Keep an eye out on the Facebook group and grab more people and bring them in. Drag them in. Bring them the in. Facebook group. Bring them in. in here. We need more votes. We need more requests. So bring them in. And uh, I'll see you guys later. Peace. Have a good night.